we go. Episode. This is it. Episode number one zero two one hundred. That means we've done a hundred and two of these damn things. Once we're done today, of course. No laugh track podcast. This is Justin Severson, the host. Acme's podcast here. Thank you to Circle of Heat for letting us play their music at the beginning once again. If you haven't yet, leave a review or a comments on iTunes. I uh, I like seeing that stuff. I've been posting the episodes on youtube and getting some uh, feedback on that so that's been real nice uh let's get to it the guest kermit apio appeal a uh, damn it son of a <laughs> take two appeal i knew that kermit appeal great start justin mispronouncing his name hey kermit hi thanks for having me on i'm glad to be here you know i i did i wrote your name down and i even spelled it uh correctly though the kermit part because <laughs> it's et it is et yes yes the and frog was, is it yes and well everybody else is it my parents got it wrong and, and because my mom didn't like the pronunciation so not only did she give me a, a weird name but she she spelled it wrong so people apologize oh i'm sorry i didn't i didn't realize you, i spelled your name wrong and i go no no my parents because <laughs> she didn't like kermit she wanted kermit and uh and and so she totally spelled it differently. Kermit, Kermit. I can right. see that. Right. And she wanted a better pronunciation, so she changed it. <laughs> well, luckily, when your name is Kermit Appeal, you're never fighting for a, a domain name. You know what I mean? You, you know, when, when when I joined Twitter, Kermit Appeal was available. When I when I you know when I joined Facebook, Kermit Appeal was available. So. What about when you went to get your uh, vanity keychain with your name on it? <laughs> well, yeah, I know those. What, do you just get something that's close? <laughs> ah, between Kenneth and Kevin, there's always this. <laughs> There's always this moment of despair. I guess I won't get a Disneyland keychain. <laughs> K- Kenneth. Uh, Kenneth. Mm, crossing my fingers. Yeah, yeah. Cr- ah, crap. <laughs> crap. So welcome back to town. I'm um, glad to be back. Yeah, I love I, this city. Yeah, I think I was looking and I think that I started hosting this show right after the last time you were here. 2012? Spring 2012 probably last time you were here. Does that sound right? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't remember, but here's what, here's why I, I think that's correct because you were in doing the, uh, you know, the, the morning show with us and after the show, you and Dave Mordahl started telling a story about a certain parade that was put on. <laughs> yes, yes. And then, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I didn't know who you were talking about. You even said his name and I didn't, at the time I didn't know who that was. Right, right. Well then two, three weeks later. He was here as my guest on the podcast, and that came up. The, so Elliot was Elliot, Elliot was here Max. weeks after you heard the yes. story. Oh, that's and, great! And I'm telling you, Kermit, you should probably go back and listen to that. You'll hearing my reaction of I mean, literally, I was sitting right here looking at him, and the I, that's when I realized that this guy that I just heard about this story was sitting right across from me. <laughs> this was the guy, and I kept on going, "You're kidding me! You're kidding me! That's not you! That's not you!" So you talk to him about the yeah. About, okay, so here's the beauty of it. I want to listen to that because. We all have our versions of the story, right? Yeah. We all we all know what what we remember and what we thought about it, and how funny we thought. But to hear the guy who was sitting on the float, that that had to be amazing, right? To be able to ask Do him. Do you about want to tell it. some of the, some of it right now? Okay. Well, basically, the story <laughs> is that, and this is the, this is uh, the folks here at Acme played a, a prank on a, on a friend of mine, a very funny comedian, where they basically told him there's there's a harvest parade in October, happens to be the week that you're here. Yeah. Would you mind being on our float in the parade? And they, it's a long story, but they basically set up a flatbed truck. They got permits to, to there was no parade. There's no harvest festival in Minneapolis. No. And, and so they put, they put hay bales. They had a, uh, you know, those, uh, those, 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 uh, how, what do you, how do you, those horses at the playground that are on the spring yeah. and they go back and forth and back and forth. They had Nick Swartzen on one of those things, bolted to the truck. And so he's, he's bouncing back and forth. And they paraded him through downtown without a parade. They literally just took him on a flatbed truck, uh, d- decorated to be a Harvest Festival float, for about 45 minutes. And they kept telling, like, the parade's right around the corner. Yes, yeah, and they kept going, you know, we can't find it. You know, I think we've got to go down this way. And they, 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 you know, I think once we get to the other part of Hennepin, we're going to be fine. And they kept telling him that until after a while, he just kind of knew that this, there's no parade. Like, <laughs> because you would see probably something. Right in right. downtown, you would see maybe some police cars blocking a road. Anything. Nothing was blocked. Yeah. And anyways, it, it was just a great prank on on a guy who uh, just a really funny comic yeah. and 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 a very nice guy. And and uh, and so yeah, so you got to hear his perspective. So. Oh, with his uh, son uh, sitting next to him. 
Oh, that's good. With Joe there? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Joe Larson. Right? Joe Larson, yeah. a very funny comedian who, you know, um, I've known Joe since he was eight because uh, I've worked with his dad. And so I've known Joe since he was really young. And I remember when he first started doing open mic where all of us, all his comedy uncles were just going, don't, don't do it, man. You know, yeah. go, go for a better life. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, and I remember, this is before I, I had kids, watching him do an open mic, uh, my stomach would turn. You know, because because here's a kid who you love, and now he's 21, and he's excited about life, and yeah. and you just don't want him to go up there and, and, and just eat it in front of 15 right. people. And, and, and so I didn't know what parenthood was like at the time, but I felt that sort of, you know, I couldn't sit down. I was pacing in the back. I just... I wanted him to do well. So I'm so glad. Like, he's become a really great headliner. But when you see a kid who you care about a lot start to do comedy, you just go, oh, don't, no, 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 run, <laughs> run. Don't do this. I know what it's like. Uh, I, I, you have to go back and listen. It, it was. I will. It was. I will. It was unbelievable. It was, I just, I, I, I couldn't believe that the person, <laughs> this legendary story that I'd just been t- overheard between you and Dave Mordahl, yeah, and, yeah. and there the guy was, was like, you got to be kidding me. Wow. You got to be kidding me. So how was, uh, you performed last night, today's Wednesday, how yes. was last night? Uh, last night was great, man. I mean, it's, you know, how, how many clubs around the country are going to get that many people on a Tuesday? It was a great number of people here, and they were a lot of fun. There was also, um, there's an amateur contest going on, so there were there were three amateurs who went on and did three minutes each, and that was fun to watch, you know, because I, uh, uh, you know, you, it, it reminds you what it was like back when you first started. Yeah. Um, and the audience is great, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I, I hadn't really been on stage much for the last uh, week or two, so it was great to kind of get back on. It's know? so funny, like, uh, I haven't been on stage in a week or two. Like, that's such a long time. <laughs> it is. But we it did, is. I did a, uh, my guests last week were uh, two kind of local comics, Brian Miller and Mike Lester. Yes. And they were, we, we did a, uh, we talked a lot about, uh, you know, getting started in comedy. And these guys, we talked about showing up to like open mics if you're not working. And they're like, oh yeah, th- you got three, four, if I'm not working three or four nights a week, it's just, it doesn't feel right. Yes. Feel like I've lost it. Yes, yeah. and that, and that's kind of what happens is you do if you, if you're not if you're not on for a week it, it feels like it feels like a year you know I mean you still remember the jokes but then there's all those eight million things that goes on in your mind you know it, it's like exercise or riding a bike or whatever you just got to keep doing it that's why I stay away from exercise <laughs> exactly it's been too long exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's been too long. And uh, the uh, pulled hammies I get from playing uh, drunk, <laughs> drunk beer league softball are proof of that. <laughs> and I'm one of the slimmer guys. Right, right. <laughs> uh, do you remember, did you do any contests like that? You know, they're doing, like you said, the funniest person in the Twin Cities contest. I did, I did. I, um, uh, I, I've, I've actually you know, been lucky to win a few. Um, I, and when I was... I think I had just quit my day job like eight months before, and it was the third time I did the Seattle Comedy Competition. I uh, I won it, and that was in '91. And it was it was just it was one of those really lucky things where there's no way I should have won it. I mean, um, as part of the winning of the Seattle Comedy Competition, you get to headline the Comedy Underground, which is a uh, which is a club in Seattle. Okay. And but here's the thing: I emceed the Comedy Underground in May, won the competition in November, so they had to headline me in December. <laughs> I never middled at the Comedy Underground. Oh, cause wow. I, yes, because I won the competition. Yeah. Well, I didn't have 45 minutes, man. I, you know, and, and, and it's funny because one of the reasons they say that I won is that in the finals, I looked so relaxed because you had to do 20 minutes. And, I looked, and everybody was rushing, trying to get, you know, trying to tighten down to 20 minutes. And it made them look kind of like, you know, they're nervous and they're rushing. And mm-hmm. I was really relaxed and mm-hmm. calm. And I and to me, I was like, no, no, no. I was trying to make it to twenty minutes. <laughs> you know, like I, I didn't want to do every joke because certain jokes, after a while, you get embarrassed that you ever wrote. You know, you're so, lucky I wasn't talking slow. Yeah, so I had about sixteen minutes or so of material, and so I was just like, don't go under, don't, you know, <laughs> don't. And so I was taking my time, and it actually helped make me look more relaxed. And so, um, uh, so I won, I won that, and then a few years ago, uh, I was lucky enough to win the uh, the Great American festival so i've done a couple of them and which is weird because because i'm not a <laughs> we, oh apparently we have an audience now we, we have a... i'm a huge comedy fan <laughs> i think it's someone just walked in and wants to know what comedy looks like <laughs> here to learn, guys. Mm-hmm. wow man he's he's here to teach me this kermit right yeah not the pro okay <laughs> all right si amundsen's in the in the audience wow. here that totally changed the podcast completely now. Yeah, I can't by the, be. By the way, do you have a ticket for that seat? Or? <laughs> <laughs> You're probably being pretty clean. 
<laughs> Can't believe this. That's oh man. Now there's all kind. Of, don't do that. I don't. No, I'm not going to say for your part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Just my face. you're going to you're going to say hi. I'll send you you're gonna oh, watch, stuff. yep. <laughs> watch Pat Suss Milch and just get the hell out of here. I, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably, yeah. You know, that's watching Pat is tough. So, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> that's good. Well, uh, audience of one, would you keep it to yourself, sir? What are you working on there? <laughs> we, we better talk slower then Sai is gonna Sai is gonna transcribe it so if you don't want to listen to it you can always read it online yes it'll, it'll be on his facebook <laughs> <clears throat> yeah the, i'm changing over to the first ever uh visual uh, the uh what would that be just words this podcast you yes. can only read yes <laughs> oh perfect Perfect. We'll be sure and uh, grab you a mic. I'm glad you stopped by. That's. <laughs> oh, you know what's boy. fun in a podcast when someone uh, better looking and funnier than you should just shows up right in the middle of it. And that really. Well, better looking is for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> Lord didn't make no mistakes. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. That's really. No, and you know what's crazy? I don't. Last time I was here, and there were this many uh, headliners in the building. Because I mean, let's let's uh, let's pull away the curtain. You you and Sai aren't the only headlining comedians in this building right now. Here. David Crow, oh, yeah. and Bent Washburn. David Crow is here. Bent Washburn is here. Yeah. It's uh, it's a little get together. What are they doing? They're uh, playing something. They're doing something with a cup in the back. It's the comedy conference. <laughs> Yeah, they're back there. Apparently, they do what they do. I don't. I don't know what that means, but yeah, there's some great comics in the building today. I'm going to go back to talking to Kermit now. Okay. And uh, Acme. Yes. First time. When were you here? The first time. Well, what's the history? Well, you know, I was talking about winning the Seattle Comedy Competition. That's how I got this gig, and because uh, uh, you know they they heard that this person you know won the Seattle Comedy Competition, and back then the Seattle and the San Francisco had a little bit of. Uh, like people heard, people would always check who the winners were and all that. Um, so they brought me out here to uh, to feature, and I loved it. I lost money. I mean, it, it, the uh, pay was about the same as the airfare, so yeah. I lost money by coming out. But man, what a great club! Everybody was so much fun. Um, I, you know, and and this is it. I was twenty. I was twenty two, right? And so after after the show, I'd never been to Minneapolis. Okay. And so the staff here. Uh, took me to First Avenue, and I was like, "I'm dancing in the place where Purple Rain was made." Mm-hmm. I mean, it was the greatest experience for a 22 yeah. year old who loved that movie. Yeah, right? hell yeah, and big Prince fan and all that. So it was just a great time, and and I was I was just crossing my fingers that they'd invite me back, and and uh, and they did, which which is just great. So that was that was 92. So oh, wow. I've been working yeah. here 22 years. Man. Holy cow! Yeah, yeah, it was, and it was great to be a part of. It was, and you were back for the anniversary shows. Yes, yeah. yes, uh, ten and twenty, and I'm honored, honored to be a part of it. Yeah, so, isn't that awesome? Yeah, you know when I first started working here, you know, right across the street, there's all these apartments there. Mm-hmm. That whole middle area, that 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 block across the street, was just this place where they dumped snow. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. When they had major snowstorms, they they just dump. A, so so when I came here in the winter, I'm always here in the winter. Right? You know, like, this is the first time I think I've been here in June. No snow today. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, 80. which Great. is awesome. Um, but yeah, and, and so then when I started when I started coming back like every year or every year and a half or so, and there'd be there'd be like another building, another building. Yeah. And now it's all these these really cool apartments mm-hmm. now. And uh, so yeah, that's a, it's I don't even live here, and I have that story back when I was <laughs> right, coming, right. twenty years ago. We didn't have all these apartments. You believe how things change. Yeah, it was a comedy club and a newspaper. That's all we had out here. I don't even know where they put the snow now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't actually. I don't know where they put the snow. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> It's being moved somewhere else, apparently. I'm not sure. Do you remember any of the names of who uh, were in these, those contests with you, by the way? Like uh, the, any names people would recognize? From the early days? Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> so so the, I did. I won the Seattle. So I'm, I'm 22, and I'm all filled with all kinds of like, all right, well, I can do this, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so uh, two years later, I go down to, to be in the San Francisco comedy competition. And... Um, and so I'm, you know, I got a little bit of confidence. I did well in Seattle. Now, granted, San Francisco is a bigger one, sure. and, you know, whatever. But I feel like, okay, I can do this, right? Well, in my preliminary week, um, uh, 
the 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 three names in my preliminary that I that I you know I, I know them as, as friends, but also was uh, Dane Cook, Doug Stanhope, and Mitch Hedberg were in my week in the San Francisco wow. preliminary. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> and uh, and 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 on top of that, there were other names of of guys that that are that are uh, Robert Hawkins was in that week. Oh yeah, like I mean there there were guys that may not be as well known, but but were Johnny Steele who wound up. Uh, when, oh no, was it was that the year Doug won? I can't remember. I think Johnny won the year before, but um, yeah, I think Doug won it. And and uh, anyway, so so I am regular. There's 15 people, and I am regularly 12 to 15, right? <laughs> right okay. <laughs> and man, it brought me right back to earth just watching. And two nights I had to follow Dane, and then one night I had to follow Doug in the prelims. And and you know Dane was this monstrous energy. I mean, just funny and jumping around, jumping around, at high energy. Right. And then Doug was just brilliant. And yeah. and the night I found the night I followed Doug, he I'm not kidding. He got a standing ovation on a on a five minute set. Yeah, it was yeah. it was incredible. You know you know I'll tell you this. You want to hear the story? Yeah, sure. Okay. So it's in Monterey, California. The night before we were in Reno, and and so a bunch of the comics went to a a, a strip club in Reno or something. In our in our week, there was a a blind guy. He would take his dog and he'd go up on stage and he'd do some jokes and it, it was a funny act and and uh, and everything. So the next night in Monterey, he the blind guy is up and then it's Doug and then me. So so I think his name was Mike. So he goes up, he does a set, you know, funny stuff. People like him and then he he leaves. And then the next act is Doug. So Doug comes up. And he goes, ah, don't, don't pity him. Stop pitying the fucking blind guy. What do you, you know, you make me sick. You pity, oh, he's blind. Don't feel bad for him. So the place now is silent, silent. Yeah. They don't know Doug. They're, what is this? And Doug goes, you know, last night we were in Reno and um, a bunch of us are going to go to a strip club and, and, and uh, Mike wanted to go. And we were like, all right, fine. You want to come? So we take him. <laughs> he goes, and now he gets to touchy feely because that's how he sees them. <laughs> right, right, right. He goes, "I got four dollars, four dollars in my pocket, my dick in my hand, and you're going to feel sorry for the blind guy? Are you serious?" <laughs> Place erupts. Right. I mean, erupts. And then from there, material is like, I mean, he is just pounding. And I'm watching this, and I'm laughing. I go, "That was brilliant." Yeah. And then I go, "Oh, I'm up next." <laughs> and I went up, and it was, I mean, it was crickets it, you know it was nothing there was oh, just no. nothing there to be had and uh, and and uh and so yeah so that was my week in the competition i mean i had won <laughs> seattle feeling all confident and in san francisco i just got beat back into the ground and it was good for me it was actually really good because i realized i got work to do mm -hmm. right to watch hawkins stanhope mitch and, and these guys work and and even mitch that at that point wasn't quite what we know him to be like mm -hmm. he was still working on the character sure but still brilliant yeah still brilliant just had to figure out how to how to get it to where it you know it hit what it became and hats off to him for doing it. Yeah. But man, it taught me a lot. It really taught me like, I need to pay attention. I need to, I, you know what I mean? I got work to do. Sure. Just cause you won your little Seattle competition, <laughs> you know? but I did get an Acme. There was, there was about four clubs I got into because of it. You know, that's perfect. Do you remember, uh, the, uh, do you remember who was the uh, headliner when you featured here for that first time? Yes. Uh, Rashawn McDonald. He, hmm. he was a writer more. He did a lot of writing for shows. He, he wasn't as known as, a Oh, headliner. okay. So yeah, that was ninety two. Isn't that crazy? Year after the twins won the series. Yeah. <laughs> right? At least yes. that's how I that's how I remember the nineties. Yeah, that's ninety uh, one. <laughs> and that that would have been the last one, right? Wasn't it ninety yeah, yeah. ninety one? Yeah. It's been a Puckett time. Herbeck. Mm-hmm. Wow, man. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was that was the last time. Well, so, hey, as a Mariner fan, you know, I can only say congratulations to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> At least you got a couple. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about some sports a bit later on. Okay. I got a bunch of stuff to ask you about that. But uh, let, let's, get, let's cover the, uh, where were you born? I was born in Honolulu. I was you, born in Hawaii. And then when did you, and then you were, at one point, when did you leave? Oh, college. When and why? I went to the University of Washington in oh, okay. Seattle. Yeah. And, uh, what was there that it... Why the University of Washington? Um, you, you Why know, would you leave Paradise for Washington? Well, <laughs> that's, I, it does. When you say it that way, it does sound kind of bizarre, doesn't it? <laughs> like, 
It sure doesn't rain enough here. Let me when just it does, put you it's on not the defense cold. here. Yeah. Why would you leave paradise? What's wrong with you? Uh, you know what, Washington? Uh, uh, I got a little bit of help with the uh, with the cost. Not a lot. It's not like I got a scholarship or anything. But there was a little bit of help with the cost. And and Seattle was a direct flight from Hawaii, which I wanted. I wanted to be close to home. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And 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 then I, I wound up just really falling in love with the city. I mean, it took me two winters to get through it. And and it's funny. I know when I say winters here, when I talk about right. Seattle winters. Yeah. Like, but when you're coming from Hawaii, Seattle is a winter. Oh, I'm, you know, sure. it is. Right. And, and, uh, and yes, we only get one or two snowstorms a year, and they melt away within a day or two. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, so it's – but it's that wet cold. You know, it's that it's – a, it's a, like when I'm here and it's cold, but it's, but it's dry, or even if it's snowing, you can walk around. You can put on a jacket. But yeah. When it's wet, when you get wet and you're cold, it's the worst. You yeah. know, Uncomfortable is uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. So, so it took me a couple of years to get used to that. But other than that – like now, I actually do really like that there are different seasons because in Hawaii the sun's down between six and seven thirty all year, right? And and the uh, and the temperatures between you know seventy five to ninety, you know, pretty much the whole year. Yeah. You know, humidity changes that a bit, but but um, uh, so so it, it was one of those things where it, it it took me a little while, but but other than other than weather, man, I I really love Seattle. It's a great town. It's a lot like Minneapolis. Yeah, in a lot of ways. That. Yeah. And then you you've lived there ever since. Yep. Yep, and I've been there longer than I was in Hawaii. I've been Look there 27 that. years now. Yeah. Son of a gun, but you still go back. Oh, yeah, I go back a lot. Yeah, yeah I get family back in. Yep, yep, family's there. So when I go back, I've got a place to stay in, mom's car. So it's it's the airfare is my only expense there, yeah. you know. Um, is there is there a cheap way to, like, if, for me, I've never been to Hawaii. But was there a cheap way to vacation in Hawaii? No. Impossible? No, no, yeah. I mean, unless, unless I could stay at your mom's house. <laughs> Over cheap charge, or, or you could you could meet a very rich older woman, you know, like a like a widow, and uh, <laughs> that's a good way to do it. Yeah. It, it isn't, you know, when I go grocery shopping, I whine in Hawaii, like I, I like seven dollars for a gallon of milk. Are you kidding me? Like, it's there's really no way to do it. I mean, some people try and do like where you, you know, like hostels or something like that, but I mean, you know, you're you're really compromising a lot of your safety and sanity, you know. <laughs> It's just very expensive, you know. It's 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 a ton of money. Here's a real dumb guy question: How do people how do people get by having to spend seven dollars on a gallon of milk? Are they making uh, forty five dollars an hour? Well, man, that's a thing. There's there's um there's a lot of help along the way. Um, there's a lot of coupons. You know, my my family <laughs> like, and you know they had those coupons with like limit three or limit five or whatever. Mm -hmm. My mom would literally have us in line behind her, which each each of us have three of something or five of something, and just we'd each pay separately. Yeah. You know, so there's always been these kind of uh, strategies. You know, jobs do pay okay there, but it's mostly service jobs now. A lot of the agriculture jobs are gone. Pineapples. You know, we're doing Mexico's pineapples now. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Pineapple and sugarcane are, are are a fraction of what they used to be when I was a kid, so uh, so yeah, it's it's I don't know how they do it, man. It's um, it, you know, my house, which is a real modest house, three three bedroom, one bath house in Hawaii, would be about seven hundred fifty on Oahu. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, and so you know, it's I don't know how people do it there. I'm I'm impressed, but but they they kind of get it done. Wow. You know? What yeah. what did what did your family do? Um. My dad was a, a cop and, and, and in sort of different phases of law enforcement. My mom was with United Hawaii Airlines. Hawaii 50 you're saying. He was, he was, he was Hawaii 50 before it was Hawaii 50 It was funny because um, he, uh, he was a cop and they sort of, they sort of developed this department and they, they made it grow as the city was kind of growing and booming. And, and then all of a sudden, statehood becomes a thing, right? So 1959, we're becoming a state, so here's how we have to do certain things. And that was a dark day for my dad and his cop friends because uh, cause my dad always used to say the two things he hated about statehood, paperwork and Miranda rights. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Because all of a sudden they have to document everything they said to the guy and everything the guy said. And then they have to read him rights. And if he didn't want to talk, he didn't have to. I couldn't hit him in the face and make him say something. Like, yeah. And it, Was there an academy that the officers actually went to or did they just uh, put a well, bad at the job time, and at the, vigilante yeah. justice? <laughs> I'm a cop. Yeah. So is my buddy, my exactly. brother. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> Come with. You yeah. can be one, too. Here's a gun and a hat. Yeah. Come ride with us. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, yeah it, it was a different ball game. So it's it's really interesting to hear my dad talk about the, the different 
you know, how, how things sort of changed. Pre-statehood. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's wild. And, and, and you know, you kind of, you kind of, you know, I don't want to get in his face, but you you know, well, Miranda rights are kind of a good thing. Yeah. You know, it's kind mm-hmm. of, you know, assume we have rights and. Sure. But, but they, those guys felt like we were getting it done. Right. And, and, and right. back then those guys weren't, um, like they weren't, it's not like they were taking bribes. It wasn't, it wasn't a corruption thing. It was purely like, well, we can really get the, get things done if we can do it our way. And they all happened to be good guys who were trying to do the right thing. There weren't any, you know, but, but the problem is when you allow this kind of thing, the bad apple will find its way. Right. 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 And, um, and so, yeah, so man, it's, it's, it's really different. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's all another reason why I, I don't get in a lot of trouble. It's not like I set out to be this goody two shoes, but when your dad is like well known, when you know we'd stop for breakfast on the way to school, and and like someone uh, the, the waitress would come and say uh, someone picked up your tab, my dad would go who, and she'd point over there, the guy over there, and be the governor. Hey, hey, boy, mm-hmm. how you doing? Like, really? Yeah, the governor just bought our tab. So when you realize that the, that that if if I had gotten in some kind of trouble and my dad had to bail me out. Me getting beat by my dad was the least of my worries, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like all his friends are, you know, are, are in the department, are in, are in, you know, politics and law enforcement, and so I never got in trouble just because I worried that I'd disappear. You know, what I mean? uh-huh. like I, yeah, no kidding. Because like, I could, I could actually disappear with that group, and nobody would know what happened. Any brothers right. or sisters that took advantage of this? <laughs> so you're the you're the clean cut one. Well, I have two younger sisters, and yeah, they're kind of along the same lines. Yeah. They, you know, but um, and then. I have I have half brothers. My oh, dad okay. had a family before we came along, okay. and, and my, of my five half brothers, uh, three three were cops. One was with the sheriff's department, and uh, no, I'm sorry, two were cops. One of the sheriff's department, and one was uh, uh, with the uh, the the worked for the prison, the Oahu prison. Oh wow! And then and then one of them was a truck driver. So yeah, it was so funny. So I come along, the first boy in the other family, mm-hmm. and I'm the comedian. You know, like I couldn't have gone farther no away kidding. from the family. Yeah. No, uh, was, was there any ever any chance you were going to do that, law enforcement? No, never. No, no, no. Wow. I was never that guy. Yeah. You know, but I'll tell you, <laughs> when I started doing uh, shows at like police events. My dad, it was like, my dad was thrilled, you know, and they'd always give me a pin to give my dad. You know, that's one of the big things your cops exchange pins. Yes, yes. So I'd always send him a pin. I'd say, hey, I did a show for this group and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and Oh, like across the United States? or Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do, I do, you know, I do a lot of corporate events. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's awesome. And so, and so I would send my dad a, a pin. And, um, and my, uh, uh, my mom told me one time, he goes, your dad, your dad loves that when he, and he, and I, and I said, yeah, it's because that's as close to being a cop as I'm ever going to get. Yeah. Like, and so those, when I did those, he was really happy. And oh, that's he'd really good. He'd always go, so, so did they enjoy the show? And, and I'd always, it didn't matter how they did. I said, yeah, they did. They yeah. liked it, you know. You like your pin. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I got a pin. <laughs> <laughs> what age did you, how, uh, how old were you where, when you wanted to be a comedian? What happened? Somebody tell you you were funny? Did they say, you're not uh, going you to be know, a cop? But you make us laugh. <laughs> when I was working right after college, I was working for United Airlines, and there was a guy who did open mic and and got some paid gigs on another shift, and I got to know him. And uh, I had always tried to write comedy, like in, in school, whenever I had uh, creative writing assignments, I tried to find if I maybe I can do this in a in a funny way. And it wasn't always funny, but I, I would always try. And I was a big fan of comedy. And so yeah, so that that guy who worked, uh, he took me to open mic, and I just hung out twice, just watched. And the third time, he said. He said, you want to sign up? And I said, what do I do? And, and he said, just, you know, some of the things you told me you wrote, you know, and yeah. and just write some stuff down and do it. And I said, what if I don't have five minutes? And he goes, get off the stage. It's <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, don't feel like you, the five minutes is what they give you. Like now it's come down. Like now you get like three yeah, when you three. first start. Back then it was five. And, um, and so, yeah, I think I did about four minutes and got some laughs. And if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. If I didn't get any laughs that night, I, I would not have returned. Never tried again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was it was scary. Yeah. Were um, you in, you were in school at the time? No, no. I was just out of school, about a year out of college. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you get get a degree? Uh, no, I didn't finish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, me neither. Well, <laughs> it's okay. Okay. So, so about a year ago, I'm sitting there and uh, having dinner with my kids, uh, and my my daughter was ten at the time, and uh, and we were talking about college. So my daughter says, "Dad, can I ask you a question?" I said, "Yeah." She goes. Why didn't you finish college? And I said, well, I wasn't doing that great. I was taking a lot of grandma and grandpa's money to not do that great. And, you know, there was a, a, a I was I was doing some part-time work with United Airlines and there was a full-time position opening up. And I thought, you know, I've never really interviewed for a real job. I should just interview for it. Mm-hmm. And so I put on a suit and interviewed and they, they offered me the job. And so I had a decision to make. And I thought, well, 
maybe if I take this job, work for a year, become a resident of Washington, my tuition will go down. Maybe I'll, if I can pay for the tuition, maybe I'll work harder. That was kind of like the motivation. And, and then comedy came along and, and everything turned in another direction. And she goes, what is residency? So I had to explain that. Well, you know, I, I was a resident of Hawaii. I was not of Washington. So you have to stay for a year, prove you've worked for a year, and then, and then you get your residency, and then you pay in-state tuition, and it's better, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so she's, she's just, I could see the gears grinding in her head. And she goes, well, it's too bad you can't ever go back to college. And I said, well, no, no, I can, I can go back. to Technically, I could go back to college. And she goes, no, Daddy, you can't. And I said, why? Why do you why do you say that? And she goes, Daddy, can you prove that you've worked for a year? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Man, I laughed for like thirty seconds. This kid's right? Great. It's a ten year old girl. <laughs> Not only that she thought of it, but that she fish hooked me in, man. Yeah. She brought me in, cracked that door open, and then slammed it on me. <laughs> I was dying. And I said, you know what? Five hours a week for 21 years, I'm pretty close to a year. Yeah, I yeah, got to yeah. be close. You know, <laughs> you do the math. Yeah. It's so, at least 11 and a half months. Round up. It was so funny. It was so funny because what I thought was going to be this conversation about why I failed in college became this joke about me yeah, you're doing thinking, comedy oh, for 20 man, years. How know? am I going to turn this into a yeah. pep talk here? Am exactly. I know exactly. That's mm-hmm. how I was feeling. Like, right? what, am I, what am I going to say? And, 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 and she just thought of a really funny joke and, and just fish hooked me into it. I uh, just had a conversation. I have two daughters. How many? What, what's your? My son is nine. My daughter's 12. Oh, okay. Yeah. Son and a daughter. I have two daughters, uh, six and eight now. And I was just having a conversation with them yesterday. And my oldest daughter said something. She was referencing something. And she's like, well, that's when you were finishing college. And I went, yeah. And just moved on. And I was like, oh, my God. I think I just lied to my daughter telling her I graduated college. She doesn't know. She knows I went because I've talked about I lived in Duluth, Minnesota. I went to school. Right. right. Uh, you know, I've talked about you know friends I've met in college that I'm still you know friends with. Well, but so I think she just assumed. But technically, quitting college is finishing. Right? <laughs> yes. you, you, you're finished going That's to true. college, right? That's true. Yeah. That's true. All right, I feel better now. I'm not a, I'm not a bad parent, at least not in regards to that. <laughs> well, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't go to. A, or you didn't you didn't not finish college you just you're just really late for a class mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. you're, you should <laughs> I'm going to check and see how I did that last semester <laughs> maybe better than expected who knows <laughs> are you watching uh you watching last comic standing I haven't been able to. I've had shows, and uh, and I'm embarrassed to say this, but I don't have the DVR. Yeah, <laughs> I know yeah. I'm so. <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, I've had shows on last Thursday. But you know, I'm so impressed because uh, so many comics from this club, yeah, um, people who I like, not only as as comedians, but as people, like genuinely great people, are on this year. And it's it's hats off to Minneapolis, man, putting that many comics and good comics mm-hmm. who who are doing well, and it's it was awesome. Are you is Pat working with you this week? Is Pat Sussman yes. working with you? Yeah. Yes. So, you know, I mean, just, it's so amazing to see. It's, 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 I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of all those comics. I like every one of them. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm still trying to catch up. There's been three episodes so far. I'm, I'm one behind. So I know that there was some of the Acme, uh, comics were on this last one. So I still need to get around to that one. But yeah, I, and I, I know I've been following Pat. Pat uh, Sussman and I are friends, you know, social yes. media. And he's, uh, <laughs> he's doing a great job being in the background. <laughs> for a lot of the pictures or the one they show on the, but then I they also posted his set his full set which was oh fantastic. that's great that's great he's uh, among many like you just said yeah he's funny I saw him uh, you know last night was the first time I saw him doing a half hour last time I saw him he did like 10 minutes mm-hmm. and so last night he watches his half hour funny stuff really really good uh, a real creative way to, to to express ideas it was fun to watch I don't know why I just thought of this but what's the longest you've ever uh, performed on stage uh well it's not see <laughs> it's not something I'm proud of um but years ago um uh and this is I, I this is why this one show is the reason I I don't drink uh on stage or near the club oh because Uh-oh. it was one of those where they they send you shots and and uh and I started doing them with them and it was fun and I don't remember much of the back half of that show. And they told me I did about an hour forty five, which no comic should do. Now they now they said it was fine. Like nobody was like, Oh, this is, this guy's, you know like people weren't like shut up already, get off the stage or, or leaving. Like yeah. I mean apparently I was entertaining, but 
but an hour 45 of just drunken yammering, right? With maybe a joke here, but mostly just riffing and, and as you know, and there's no proof. Like, uh, no, back this is back before or... everybody's phone had cameras. You yeah. know, this is, this is, and it was just one of those things where I realized like, I can't give up control of the show that much. I cannot, that, then it belongs to somebody else, right? Because then the people sending me shots are basically pulling the marionette strings yeah. on me. Uh huh. And that's when I made the decision okay, no more shots on stage. And I feel really bad because it's, you know, audience members really like to do things like that sure. for you. And, and the club likes to sell drinks, right? So it, it's <laughs> beneficial for everybody, yeah, except yeah. that when I'm on stage, if I'm, you know, and I'm a lightweight. I don't drink much at all. If I do drink, I'll have a beer, maybe two, like mm-hmm. on a real crazy night. Yeah. Um, so hard alcohol, man. It, it. I mean, it, a couple of shots, and I'm in. That's yeah. it. That's you don't want to see that show. You know, you know, because <laughs> I can't account for it. I don't know what's going to happen. So, so when you say like, what's your longest show? I, well, yeah, it's an hour forty five, but it's not something I should be doing. It's not something, you know. I mean, it, it's it's not something people would really, really want to see. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, there's certain there's certain comics who are you know, can stretch things out and, and are funny and, and are and are brilliant for an hour forty five, but that's a handful to me. That's yeah. there's only a handful that can really pull that off. And so uh yeah, yeah. So it was it was, it was a long show but uh, but not one I'm 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 really happy to talk about, you know, like <laughs> I got really drunk. I can't remember. Like it was funny because it was. Uh, I I had one of those. The motel was right across the parking lot from the from the venue, mm-hmm. and I was I had a first. You know those first floor motels where where your door opens to your car. Yeah. It's not one of those where you got to go in the lobby to your room. You right. actually can. So, <laughs> I remember I asked for a late checkout because I woke up at you know noon and I still felt like I there's no way I can drive. I still felt like I was drunk, so I asked for a late checkout. So at about two o'clock, I needed to pack my car. And I literally started walking out one piece of clothing at a time and just putting it in my window. Like I didn't, <laughs> the idea of throwing things into a bag, I just, I didn't want to do that. I just felt, and, 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 I'm, and, and it really, you look at, you look at moments in your life at comedy and you wonder how you're still in this thing. Mm-hmm. That's one of those moments where I was just sitting there throwing a t-shirt in, in the back window of my car and was, and then, and then I had to, I knew it and the bag was empty, but I was like, oh, now I got to grab the bag. <laughs> oh no. That's how bad off I was. And this is at 2 in the afternoon, the day after the show, and I'm still a mess. The hard stuff can do that to a person. Oh, There's no doubt man. about that. Well, you survived uh, hanging with uh, uh, D- Doug Stanhope and Mitch Hedberg and whoever else. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I, I, they're, I, they're, some of them are known for uh, partying here or there. Yes, so. yes. And, and, and uh, I remember <laughs> one time Doug emailed me, and uh, he said, hey, I just redid my website, which is kind of a weird thing for Doug to email me. So I just this is years ago, but I just redid my website and there's a picture of you with some midgets. And I thought he was just joking around with me. I thought he was just messing around with me. And yeah. I went and there was a picture. The link that he sent me was actually a picture of me and and I realized when we were I was working in Anchorage and he was there too. He took me to his bar that he's really famous. Like he's huge at that bar. Okay. And it's a crazy bar. It's fights break out every ten minutes in this bar. Yeah. It's it's nuts. Oh. And um and so he took me to his bar and introduced me to a couple of midget friends of his and I was really drunk and we were partying and he took a picture of me and I was, I was grabbing a midget's boob and he was, he was, had his <laughs> arms around me and it was really, uh, and I don't remember the picture. <laughs> and, perfect. And, and I know this is going to make it sound like I'm this big part. The last two stories sound like I'm a party, but I'm not, I really am not. So it was so funny when I saw this picture, I went, I think I remember the midgets. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if they remember it. <laughs> Let's bring them out. They're actually here right now. <clears throat> Come on out, you guys. <laughs> hey, I, uh, so you're still living in Seattle. Um, yep, yep. With the minimum wage going up, does that mean the comedy clubs will pay more? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wonder. That's, um, yeah, it's kind of bizarre. So you guys know about that, huh? Well, of course. Yeah. Wow. It's, you know, I, I, I'm for raising the minimum wage because it's, it's lagged way behind inflation. But when you swing that pendulum to 15, you know, like, well, so I, you know, I'm, I'm worried about how that's going to work, man. And, uh, and, and yeah, I, I don't. Tickets to see your show are going to be like 40 bucks now. <laughs> that's right. You better up the game, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I better, better start juggling because I'm going to have to bring a bigger show now. You don't have a dog you can bring on stage, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. You know, I, I'm surprised they, they passed that number. I'm really surprised it went through with that number. You know, what, uh, what, what was the last, re- so let's talk about jobs here uh, tied into this. Like the last job that you had, what did you quit before you went to Comet? United Airlines. Okay. That was it. 
Yeah, and you know what's so bizarre about that? If you look at my dad, my mom, and my two sisters, I quit in 1991. And um, what's bizarre about that is that I'm the only one since 1991 in my whole family that's been at the same job. Like, isn't that weird? And and like three years after I quit, they sold off, United sold off the department I work for and, 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 and went out to a different company. You know, they, they, they contracted that work. And the people in that company didn't get flight benefits. So the, the people who stayed with that company lost their United flight benefits. Oh. Yeah. And then United went bankrupt a few years later. And so my mom, a big chunk of her uh, her stuff she set away in United stock was gone. Oh, no. Yeah. And and now they're merging with Continental, whatever. Like I mean, it was so bizarre that at the time I was the one making the risky decision. And it's turned out to be like the only steady job yeah. of all my family, right? I mean, telling jokes is the one that lasted. Right. That's bizarre to think about. It is, absolutely. Yeah. So Unless United you ask Airlines. your daughter and she'll say, you still <laughs> yeah, yeah, need to right. get a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was just talking about the number of hours. I don't think she was talking about the steady, you know. So, yeah, it was really bizarre, man. I I, um, uh, I, I, I quit in 91 and I've been, I've been doing this since. What, and what was the, uh, what were you doing for him? I did a few different jobs, but my main job was the liquor liquor department. You know the carts that they push. Um, I was working on those carts. I was taking them, taking them. Uh, they'd bring them to the building where I worked, and I'd take a cart, break the seal, make sure everything was there that the flight attendant said is there, and uh, and then reset it for an outbound flight. So I had to fill whatever wasn't there. I'd fill the carts. In and your I, pockets. <laughs> you can right. admit it now. It's been a long time. I, no, I didn't actually. I, I, I'm a relatively responsible guy. Plus, I, when, when comedy came along, I was getting free drinks there. So oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I was counting counting liquor bottles and and uh, and and I will say this: the Alaska flights, those carts would come back empty. Oh yeah, <laughs> they they drank even the morning flights. The one that arrived at nine a.m. They'd have hardly sure. any alcohol left. You know, yeah. uh, those uh, man when Alaskans came down to the lower forty eight, they were coming to party. I suppose, and you're not like you're uh, getting off the plane and into a, a behind the wheel. You're getting into a cab you're and going to go to the vacation. Hotel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're gonna go, go. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'd be doing the same thing. Yep. Well, that's interesting. And and uh, I'm guessing that your pay was lower than fifteen dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you to think if you went back now. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I think it was it was half decent pay, but it was just you know. It was just boring work, and uh, you know what I mean. Like it was, oh, yeah. it was decent pay, and it did have benefits, which is good. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I didn't get insurance till my wife took a state job a few years I was ago. Say, you know? I bet you went without yeah. for a while. Yeah, yeah. So, so from that standpoint, yeah. But, but man, comedy is just so much fun. And you know what? I really thought at 23 when I quit, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do this for a couple of years because I want that story, right? I want to say I was a touring comedian. I yeah. went to different states and I did comedy, and then, and then you know, whatever. At 25, I, I. I'd you know settle down or not settle down but but just grow up you know what I mean get a real job and and I figured at 23 I had time to fail yeah I had time to mess up and I and and I'm glad I'm glad I thought that and I probably should have thought I, I had time to succeed <laughs> <laughs> perspective man yeah wow. yeah well but, you know when you're low self esteem you take the wins where you can get it but <laughs> oh yeah but yeah so so I did um. <laughs> Uh, so I did it with the idea that I'm just going to do this for a couple of years and always have that story, always have that thing I can tell my grandkids, yeah. you know, and, uh, and, and it's still going. So I'm, I, I've been very lucky, you know. What do you, what do you think your, your uh, children are going to, what if they said they wanted to do comedy? Oh, man. I, you know, <laughs> who am I to discourage? Because, you know, my parents, very blue collar working parents encouraged me to, you know, when I decided to do this and. You know, but I would just say, is there is there anything else you like? Anything else? You know, just because I know I know it can be, and it's harder now than when I started. It's way harder now to start comedy than when I started. Yeah, I bet. So, um, uh, so yeah, I would, I would, I wouldn't discourage them, but I would just say, look, you know, I know the path, man, and and uh, I'll be totally honest with you is what's ahead of you, and uh, but if you want to go for it, go for it. Send them to a San Francisco to do a competition. <laughs> yeah, that's the butts right. kicked. Yes, yes. Go follow the four hottest comics of the time each night of the week. Go do that. <laughs> Are you? Uh, this is a big week uh, for guys like us, of course. Father's Day coming yeah. up on Sunday. Yeah, I. Um, I'm going to say this, even though no one is going to give a shit. On this Father's Day, I'm going to travel to see my grandparents. And they're this month in June celebrating their 60th wow. wedding anniversary. 
So I know no one gives a shit about that, but I think no, that's, but that's, that's great awesome. though. That is that is, sixty is amazing. 60. Yeah, yeah. My wife and I have been together twenty, so oh, oh. tripling that. Mm-hmm. I, I, no, I don't. We're not going to have anything to talk about, man. I mean, that's that's impressive. Yeah. Um, but we, yeah, we've been together. We just passed twenty years. I think we're almost to twenty-one now. Look at that. Yeah. So you're going to be. Uh... My relationship is old enough to drink. <laughs> <laughs> been looking forward to that. <laughs> Will you be back home? Are you going back home on Sunday then? Or are you? Yeah, yeah. I am, next, I am flying uh... home. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm taking the early flight. So yeah, yeah. Late show ends at midnight. Hang out with the hang out with everybody, and then maybe just go to the airport from there. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So you think they'll have something special for you? When you get home, back to Seattle. Yeah, yeah, I think I think they will. They better. They, that's one. You know, it's one thing about when you're a dad that leaves, like you get missed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. like the dads are there every day. Like you get kind of taken for granted. But but when you're when you go, you know, and I'm only home for a day. I leave Acme. I go home on Sunday and Monday morning. I go to Vegas. Oh, wow. so yeah. So I think because I'm only there a day, it's Father's Day, and, and I was gone last Father's Day. I was on the road. Oh, so, you were? okay. So I think I think yeah, they're gonna do something. Yeah. And, and my kids are still at that age where they care. You know, my daughter is almost to the point. She's 12. And she's almost to the point where, I mean, there's so much eye rolling now. And then, you know, whatever, dad, you know. Well, my kids are never going to do that. No, it's too bad no, yours six aren't. and eight, they're going to love you. They're going <laughs> to, absolutely. It is kind of funny that, that, that you know, that, that, that this girl, when she was little, just, you know, you'd be sitting there and she'd just put her head on your shoulder and go, I love you, daddy. Yeah. Like, you just, you just go, oh, that is awesome, you know. Oh, yeah. And then when she says something like, you know, uh. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you don't you don't understand me. I, I just told you to put on a jacket. Like mm-hmm. that wasn't that's not the right reaction to that. Like, ask you to put on a jacket doesn't mean I, yeah, I don't understand you. But that had, that's why not, are you yelling at me about a jacket? I know. I, no, I was just suggesting. What's you with should this grab your jacket, jacket thing? Like jacket thing. <laughs> I don't like wearing jackets. That's not real. That's not. <laughs> that's not. No, that's not human. Human beings have to keep their temperatures so they can survive. Yeah. That's. And so, and so it's so funny because, because yeah, to to watch this happen, but but there's still, I mean, she's 12, so she's still kind of at an age where I know they're going to do something, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, so I'm happy. And happy Father's Day to you as well. Yes, thank you, yeah. thank you. I'm looking forward to it. I'm a uh, I'm a divorced father, so but I get him on Sunday. So oh, good, very good. Ah, oh, that's really wonderful. really as really well. You should looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. We, it's been working out well, so we both got that going. Um. I do a thing often, and I'm going to do it with you right now, where I put in, I go on the Google or the Bing, and I put in a phrase and have it autocomplete <laughs> to see where it's going to go. <laughs> so I'm going to read this to you, and I want you to describe why, why would Google think that that's how I was going to complete this <laughs> sentence. I put Hawaiians are, do you want to take a guess? Oh, I'm going to give you two of them. The top two that came up. Okay. Can you guess? Even? I don't want to guess. Okay. I, 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 I can't imagine it would be as creative as what you're going to say. Uh, well, the f- one is, I will do, I'll, and I want your comments on this, Hawaiians are stupid. <laughs> that's, that's the first thing that came. Mm-hmm. So, oh, man. Yeah. That's, uh, Why would it say Hawaiians are stupid? So that would mean that... that Either Google feels that way, or, or people are trending a, that. A lot of people have searched <laughs> something that or something very similar. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I didn't. I thought our stereotype was we're late all the time. I late? didn't think. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, Hawaiians are late all the time. You know. Um, huh. I, I don't. I man, we Hawaiians are stupid as a search. I'm on, not making this up. No, no. I, I'm, I, not, I'm believe not judging me. <laughs> anyone. These aren't stereotypes out of my mind. <laughs> I'll tell you what I know about Hawaii. Um, Lost. I watched Lost, and I know that they filmed Lost there. <laughs> yes, the show that doesn't admit it's in Hawaii. Right, yeah. exactly. No, this is a mystery island. It's not uh, uh, Hawaii. Uh, I also know about Hawaii Five-O, the new one and the old one, and <laughs> that the Brady Bunch went there on vacation and took some necklace or something. Or something. Right, but, because of a – and that's that was the one where uh, there's a tarantula in one of the scenes. Remember that? There's yeah. a, like uh, Bobby or somebody gets either bit by a tarantula or something. And um, and the funny thing of that is that there's no tarantulas in Hawaii. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's, uh, you can't bring things like uh, snakes and 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 big big spiders are illegal. You can't bring them in. And so I I remember seeing that going. We don't, we don't have those there. And and you know what I mean? Like it was. <laughs> so they had to fly in a tarantula to make the script work. Like they literally <laughs> had to bring in their own tarantula, get permission from probably whatever animal right, right. regulation people. Mm-hmm. And then fly their tarantula back to the mainland. 
See, you, you know, know I always thought that, you know, Hawaii's, you know, covered in tarantulas. Yeah, but... because of the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And we're the ones who are stupid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm really fascinated why we'd, why we'd be the stupid ones. I, I don't know. Okay. Well, that there, that's a good enough answer. You don't know why. How about this one? This It get, gets even meaner, actually. <laughs> Hawaiians are racist. Well, okay, that one I could see. Okay, why? Here's why. In in Hawaii, the uh, the minority in Hawaii is white, is Caucasian, um, because there's so many different races: there's Hawaiians, Samoans, Filipinos, Asians, you know, Chinese, Japanese, Koreans. The the minority is is white, and and there's also a bit of like not animosity, but there's a feeling towards uh, Hawaii or uh, towards white people as to how how Hawaii was acquired mm-hmm. it essentially was done illegally, you yeah. know? Uh, and, and so there's, there's that, you know, as, as when I was a kid, they didn't teach it that way, but now they're kind of being more accurate about how they teach h- how, you know, Hawaii became an American territory. So, so there's this kind of weird thing, which I can't stand, but there's a, there's this weird racism that if you're white walking around in Hawaii, someone will say something to you or driving by in a car will swear at you. You know what I mean? It's, really? Yeah, and I'm absolutely not proud of it and, oh, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I hate it, and, and it but it, it, is, it is a part of it. Plus, whenever you have sort of economic downtimes, there's always this feeling that you got to blame somebody, right? And, and, um, and so a lot of people have this sort of thought that, that you know, these people are, are, you know, but the fact is the the couple that saved for 10 years to go to Hawaii and go see paradise walking down the street, they're not the people who are keeping you down, no, right? No, they no. they are literally helping your economy. They're sure. helping you and you don't know that they are or they aren't nice, but yet you're going to yell at them. You're going to push them around. You're going to, you're going to say things to them. So, so that search I totally see because that, that exists. That oh, is, that is a real thing. Um, and, uh, and so, so yeah, yeah. So that, that part of it. And then, and like I said, it's something I joke about when I'm in front of Hawaiian crowds. Yeah. I, will, I will make jokes about it. Because, oh, good. Um, uh, because I just feel like it's something that needs to be, yeah. needs to be addressed. Because, because you, you know, when, when you, and I've lived in the mainland for a long time, and I've, I've performed in 47 states. I've traveled all around the country. And when you see people treated a certain way because of the way they look, it's really tough to watch, right? But in Hawaii, when you're the majority, you don't realize you're doing it. You don't realize... That you are the thing that when you see it happen to people on the mainland or in the movie or in TV that you just hate and you despise, but you're doing it here at home, right? There's that, there's yeah, that, yeah. There's that hypocrisy of mm-hmm. it. So I totally see that search. That, that is a conversation that's had a lot. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Do you, uh, what kind of feedback do you get when you're doing that back there? Like, hey, kind of well, pointing it out. Do you? I get, well, I get good feedback because the people who who are doing it, they know what I'm saying. They know I'm not lying or I'm not making anything up. The people who are, who are doing it, they know they're, they're, they're kind of being assholes. Mm-hmm. And, and then, and then the people who, who believe what I'm, you know, believe what I'm saying, they, they, so I only get the good ones because oh. people who, you know, people are going to come up, to, people aren't going to come up to me and go, Hey, you know what? I can be racist towards white people if I want. Like you can't, it's hard. It's a hard position to defend. You, you know what I mean? In a, mm-hmm. in a conversation. Yeah, it's no. really, yeah, you know. <laughs> shouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, we we're running out of time here. Let, I want to talk some sports with you here. Okay. First of all, do you love or hate the Oklahoma City Thunder? Hate, hate. You know, um, I I won't watch an NBA game until they're out. So I I the game one of the finals was the first game I watched. I cannot watch the NBA. I can't watch a highlight. If I'm watching Sports Center and they start a Thunder highlight, I change the channel. I won't watch a highlight. I won't watch anything. Now, granted, hey, they did what owners do. You know, they bought the team to, and and they bought the team with the intent to move them. They moved them. It's whatever. But man, I, I hate it as as a Seattle resident, as a basketball fan, a sports fan in general. Um, yeah, I can't watch a Thunder thing. You know, and 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 I've got a couple friends from Oklahoma, uh, Facebook friends from or in Oklahoma, and uh, and there are times when I post things where I know they're going to get mad or like you know uptight and. And and one of them, one of them said to me, he said, "Look, you guys have football, you got baseball, you got a great city, you you know, you got a great music scene, comedy scene, your theater scene, you know, and all this. You got you got lots of stuff in Seattle, you know, and all we have now is a basketball team in, in Oklahoma City, right? Yeah. And I go, yeah, that's the raising Arizona logic that that you got five babies, I'm taking one right, of them. Right, it is. Hey, I still <laughs> love that fifth baby. <laughs> 
That's perfect. Yeah. That's I, a perfect I was analogy. cracking up when he said that. Are you kidding me? Yes, Seattle's a great town. Yes, we got a lot of stuff. You still took our team. Yeah. You know? Loved them just as much as the uh, Mariners and the uh, Seahawks. We Long do, back. we do. Yeah, yeah, man. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and until the Super Bowl this past year, they were our only major championship. You know, the Sonics in 79 were the only major championship Seattle had until that Super Bowl this year. So, so it was a tough one. It was a tough one to see them go. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. Bastards. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so bad. I didn't know you'd have such strong feelings. That's that's that's. That's fantastic. Oh yeah, I, I stopped watching basketball till they're till they're out. Well, as a Minnesotan who's a big hockey fan, when our team, uh, the Minnesota North Stars, left oh. uh, to tech to freaking Texas, I know of all places, right? Minnesota hockey to Texas, yes, yes. Texas. <laughs> oh my! God. And a place that loves hockey so much, yep. you know. And then, uh, oh, and then uh, one more thing. I, you were telling me off the air that you're very upset that the gays stole the rainbow mascot. <laughs> I've never said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I was, I was, I thought it was funny because um, there was a time where the UH football team they were the Rainbow Warriors. Mm-hmm. That's that's their. It's uh, not anymore. No, it's oh. the Warriors now. Oh, it is. Well, the volleyball I didn't even team, know that. the volleyball team still uses Rainbow. You know, but they changed to the Warriors. And I was talking, I was talking to my mom, and and she said, "Well, you know, the the, the Rainbow symbols kind of, kind of, you know, it means something different now. So they decided to kind of get away from that." And. And I realized, oh, because, you know, there's the gay kind of rainbow symbol, whatever. Um, but really, anybody confusing the two? No. You know what I mean? Is anybody watching? You know what I mean? And and then I realized, well, the football players are wearing capri pants, right? <laughs> I mean, they are kind of, they, they are knee high. Yeah. You know, they're tight. Uh-huh. Um, but it was so funny. Accentuate. Like, like, really? Are we? But, you know, and, and their logo is really cool now and, and whatever. So they're the warriors. But. But yeah, it was so funny to me that that that, that was a thing, right? Like like, like we're going to confuse it. Does no. this mean the UH football team is gay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, according to you. No. <laughs> yeah. And then finally, uh, actually, two more quick things. Uh, Sean Kemp, did we get a final count to how many children? <laughs> you had to really. Yeah. You're going to do that. And then the other, you don't even have to answer that. <laughs> okay, good. And then the other thing is, uh, best Hawaiian athlete in the United States were. Who's your favorite? Who's the best? Wow, man. That's uh, like right now or throughout history? Let's go throughout history. Well, uh, Duke Kahanamoku, the surfer, like he, he, he won swimming medals and, and, and was a great surfer and kind of revolutionized how surfing was done. Um, man. Shane Victorino? Shane Victorino. How, how do you not go with Shane Victorino? He's got a World Series. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's been effective for a lot of years. Um, I wrote another one down here. Now I can't find that. Well, in any case, yeah. Mosi Tatupu for oh, yeah. the Patriots. It was uh, Russ Francis, the tight end for the Niners. Um, Olin Krutz, who's an offensive lineman. Somebody knows who he is. Bears. But, yeah, for the Bears. Yeah. Great offensive lineman. Like, great, great player. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think there's been a basketball player, though. I don't think we've had the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> We've had baseball and football, though. Well, you wouldn't know. You don't watch it on ESPN. <laughs> That's right. I no I'll longer you know. watch it. It's true. It's true. I totally missed Kevin Love. Completely missed him because yeah. I, I didn't watch any regular season games. <laughs> well, who knows? He may be. Uh, he may be playing in California uh, or something. Man, I year, hope. So. I hope they can keep him. You know. Who knows? Who it's knows? an entertaining guy to watch play. Yeah. 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 He's good. The rebound master. Yeah. Kermit, thank you. Thanks for having me, man. It's been an honor. Uh, tell people, I know you're doing. Uh, you're on Twitter and Facebook. And stuff. I am. Uh, at Kermit Appeal. So K-E-R-M-E-T-A-P-I-O, and Facebook is uh, Kermit Appeal. And if you go on Twitter and put in K-E-R-M-I-T, there are some references to you out there, but <laughs> very few. And like the, the third most recent one is from like 2012. So most people get your name right. That's good. And probably not flattering, really. Probably not. Oh, not... They were actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. they were. We're good. They I, were. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Kermit Appeal on Twitter, Kermit Appeal on Facebook. All right, and then you're yeah. here until uh, Saturday. And I don't have an Instagram because I'm 46. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one either because I'm all, almost 40. So there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Kermit. Thanks for having me.